paradigm shift. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on to. It's, it's an, an idea. idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain life. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. some conspiracy theory or some weird theory that other people think are weird. And if you found out the truth, you might find you were actually wrong, that your theory was bogus. And if you are not open to that possibility, then you're not really going for the truth. On the other hand, there may be somebody who says, well, I believe what the mainstream believes, and I believe what everyone around me believes, and I'm not going to consider anything that sounds unusual or weird. They don't want to know the truth either. Wanting to know the truth requires risking what you already have and what you're already comfortable with, which is why most people don't want to know the truth. Assuming you actually want to know the truth, how do you get there? By using the scientific method or the scientific process. I'm a huge fan of the scientific process. I think it's the only way to reach rational conclusions. However, I'm also a huge critic of a lot of people who stick the label scientist on themselves. The scientific process, in a nutshell, is you take in evidence, you take in data, and from it you try to extrapolate an explanation of reality, or pieces of reality. You try to get a worldview that actually matches the world outside of you. And sometimes you find out, whoops, well, that data made it look like this, but now this data makes it... And so you have to test your theories and sometimes throw them out. A lot of people who wear the label scientist and pretend they like science what they do is take in a lot of evidence, look at the stuff that already fits what they already believe, and the other stuff, that's just weird. We're, we're going to pretend that didn't happen. So by the scientific process, I don't mean come to the results that are now usually labeled under science. I mean the actual scientific process of look at the world, take in all the evidence you can, and then try to figure out reality from that, even if the evidence is weird and disturbing and goes against what you already want. 
Another problem that stops people from using the scientific process is when it starts to point at a conclusion that they don't like. They will often bail out. If you start to see a rational examination of the evidence pointing towards you were totally wrong about something, most people will bail out around the other way because they're invested in what they already believe in. Now, this is especially true if it's something you believed in your whole life, you've worked on, maybe if you've devoted your career to something, and somebody comes along and says, I want you to consider this and rationally look at the evidence and find out that your entire career was based on a gigantic lie. There is a huge motivation to not look at that, to not use the scientific process. That's what each one of us has to look out for inside our own heads. Are there any walls we put up because we think, I don't really like where that evidence and logic is leading me, I'm just going to kind of stick a wall there and pretend I didn't see that. That's the comfortable, easy thing. There are lots of conclusions people don't want to reach. There are lots and lots of conspiracy theories, and when people say conspiracy theory, they're usually bashing it, and what they usually mean is, I don't want to consider the possibility that the explanation for this event that happened is something that's really going to creep me out. So I'm going to call it a conspiracy theory. That is not scientific and that is not rational. When you have things happen like what happened in Boston and 9-11, I don't even bother telling people what I think very often or arguing the evidence. I just go to people and say, do you look at this evidence? Did you approach this wanting to know what happened? Or did you approach this determined that this will be the conclusion you reach no matter what? And that's most people, because most people don't want to know the truth. And the only people who ever move it forward are the ones who say, yeah, I want to know the whole truth. It might be unpleasant, and it might totally mess up my view of the world, and might mess up my life and everything else, but uh, yeah, truth's got to come first. Assuming we want to know the truth, and assuming we know the scientific process, why do we come to so many different conclusions? What messes things up for us? Checking for warped perceptions. The primary problem in the world is not greed, and it is not hatred, and it is not malice. It's the fact that people's perception of reality is hugely twisted by things they're taught, by things they hear all around them, their upbringing. I think it's pretty self-evident that if you have one huge group of people who means well and wants truth and justice to prevail and sees reality as it is, and another huge group of people who wants truth and justice to prevail, and they see reality as it is, they probably wouldn't be trying to murder each other. Which means the underlying problem in every war is not the hatred, even though there's obvious surface animosity while they're trying to kill each other. It's warping of perceptions. At least one side, and I would say both sides every time, their perceptions have been warped such that they think trying to kill that other guy is necessary for humanity. And the guy over there thinks trying to kill them is necessary for humanity. And if the one side or both sides whose perceptions were mangled could fix their own perceptions, the war stops. Because they suddenly realize, okay, you think you're the good guy and I think I'm the good guy. If we both understand reality, we'll probably stop killing each other. The problem is, this is something I refer to as mental lenses, things that are inside our head that warp the way we see the world. Everybody thinks he sees the world as it is. It's impossible not to. You think you see reality, you think you have a pretty good grip on reality. There, there may be things you say, well, I don't know about this and I don't know about that, but I have a general grasp on what's going on. Nobody thinks his own perception is messed up. Now, everybody can point to all sorts of other people's things. And pointing out that somebody else is delusional doesn't make them not delusional, even if they are. The only thing that moves humanity forward is if somebody dares to look inside their own head and say, are there things that are messing up my perception of reality and making me do stupid stuff? Because the only one you can actually change is yourself. Unfortunately, most people would much rather shoot at other people than say, maybe my belief system is based on some bogus ideas. So for the past 10,000 years or whatever, we've just been killing each other because I'd rather kill you than think about my own paradigm. Not a good situation, but it is changing with events like this. Why would our perceptions be warped? When I talk about mental malware, I mean stuff that was put there intentionally to mess you up. 
Most of what we believe is passed on to us from our parents, our teachers, our friends, people around us, our society as a whole, the media, all the things we're exposed to. I do not believe that everybody out there telling a lie is trying to tell a lie. I believe the vast majority are just passing on lies that they were taught because they don't know any better. When parents teach their children stupid things that they learn, they're not thinking, ha ha, I'm going to get my kids to this one. They think they're the same reality to the next generation. When teachers teach the same garbage that they were taught that's untrue and based on a bunch of false paradigms, they're not trying to be nasty, they're just passing on their own misunderstanding. And this is why, number one, is important, we have to want to know the truth. Because if someone who cares about you and loves you is telling you this and they sound so sure of themselves, the hardest thing in the world is to think, well, you know, maybe you're totally wrong, Mom and Dad. You know, I know you mean well, I don't think you're trying to fake me out, but I think you and everyone around me might be totally wrong about this. Uh, another reason people don't want the truth is if you're the only one who believes something, it's really uncomfortable. I suspect people in this crowd know that a lot more than the general public. Not being in the majority is an uncomfortable place to be, which tends to push us into a majority that all can feel confident that together they believe the wrong destructive things. For the purpose of this talk, what matters is getting it out of your head. Those of you who know about the, the Prussian indoctrination system and like John Taylor Gatto's work, you can very much see the openly admitted intentional design of programming people to be easily controlled and, and unthinking machines. It doesn't even matter if you got these warped perceptions by way of misinformed but benevolent sources or actual psychos trying to control you. Because either way, if they're stuck in your head and messing with your perception, then they need to be fixed. The primary example of malware that I talk about is the malware revolving around concepts of government and law and politics and authority and crime and all the terminology and all the thought processes that tentacles come out from the belief in authority. It's really easy to point to some bad guy, to point to some tyrant, to point to some regime and say, that's the problem, they're scary, they're bad, let's go do something about them. The main problem isn't the bad guys. The bad guys will keep being bad guys. The main problem is the power they get from the warping of the perceptions of their victims. And if you fix the perception of their victims, the control freaks don't have any power anymore. Everybody believes in government. They believe it's real. They believe in the law. They believe in authority. And they have all these perceptions that they think are based on reality. That is a great sign that you have somebody controlling what's in here. But if you're convinced that it's law and it's government and it's authority, literally people feel profound moral guilt at doing something that doesn't hurt anybody but disobeys the group of people who claim to be government, who claim to have the right to rule. I love the term law-abiding taxpayer because it's people proudly displaying their malware for all the world to see. <laughs> I am proud that I give my money to a bunch of crooks and I do whatever they tell me. Law-abiding taxpayer. That is all it means. Lots and lots of history is good people who are taught to believe the lie of authority, either just spectating and doing nothing, or actively helping to dominate, oppress, or even kill their fellow man because authority told them to. And that's what I mean by the fact that the problem is not the psychos. There's only one reason we know the name Adolf Hitler, and it wasn't because of Adolf Hitler. It was because lots of people in Germany believed in the thing called authority. And so if the guy is in a certain position and has a certain job description, and he tells you to do something, well, you do it. You follow orders. You enforce the law. If they didn't believe that, what could one goofball with a stupid mustache possibly have done on his own? Same thing everywhere. Red China, Soviet Union, you can go anywhere you want. The mass oppression was not because all the individuals doing it thought, you know, today I just want to go hurt somebody. It's because they were raised with the malware of authoritarianism and government and law and all these concepts that go together so that they literally feel guilty about doing what they know is right.
But Stanley Milgram did experiments which totally show that this applies to Americans as much as anybody else. We know what is right and wrong, and we will do the wrong thing if a perceived authority tells us to. That's the horrendous punchline. And I highly suggest everybody go check out those. It should be required. People should be forced to read that book. Stanley Milgram's book is called Obedience to Authority, and it goes all through his experiments, which is really creepy, but it's an outstanding expose on mental malware and the destruction it leads to uh, making good people do really nasty, evil stuff. Even inside the freedom movement, because the malware is so lodged in most people's heads, even the vast majority of people say, I want freedom, they don't recognize their own malware. They don't even check for it. Because they think, the problem's in Washington, D.C. Those guys are bad guys. And yeah, they are bad guys, but they're not the problem. And we have to go do something to that. And whenever that's the focus, you lose, because you miss the underlying problem of the world. The entire idea that we have to do something to the ruling class, whether it's we have to vote in people who will sit back and go petition them, we have to go have a protest, we have to have a revolution. <clears throat> there is nothing you can do to the control freaks who pretend to be government that will fix reality. As long as that malware is in their heads, it doesn't matter what you do to the current ruling class. Elections and petitions, even revolutions, they're pointless because that isn't the problem. If the problem is inside your head, shooting somebody in Washington isn't going to fix it. But if you imagine a world in which the malware is gone, and tomorrow 300 million people wake up and say, I don't really feel a need to give a bunch of my money to them. In fact, I don't feel a need to use their crummy currency that keeps going down in value. I don't feel the moral obligation to obey their arbitrary stupid commands, and I definitely don't want to fuel their war machine in their police state. So, nah, nah, nah. now if one person does that, out come the jackboots and he gets stomped and killed and thrown in the cage. If 300 million do it, we're done. The end. As long as you're focused on doing something to the rulers, nothing fixes because they're not the problem. And all of their power comes from the malware in our heads. Our perceptions that they have the right to do this, that their commands are law, that when they say give me money, it isn't robbery, it's taxation. These ideas in the heads of the victims are the problem. But what it comes down to is when people understand the malware, it goes away. Don't be scared of chaos and anarchy. Be scared of the guy who says, put me in charge, I will fix the world. He is not your master. You are your master.